Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. This is Think Design Stories. In this series, we will be going behind the scenes on one of the most iconic laptop brands ever conceived and is still going strong. Today I am joined by David Hill, who started with IBM in 1985 and was with them until May 2005 when the IBM ThinkPad division was purchased by Lenovo. Since then, David has held several positions between those two companies, including the Executive Director of Design, the Vice President of Corporate Identity and Design, and the Chief Design Officer and Vice President of Experience Design. When it comes to ThinkPads, there are few people that know more than he does. As we've talked earlier, ThinkPad is a brand that's been around for a really, really, really long time, especially for a computer and it has been safeguarded and helped and innovated uh, by yourself, but also lots of other people have got their fingerprints on that black paint. And I know that you've had the opportunity to work with many of those people. And I was wondering if you would uh, be willing to share just a a couple memories uh, throughout your time interacting with all of these uh, fantastic individuals that made ThinkPad so great. Sure. There's a few, I mean, there's, there's many, many people, obviously, um, who, who have been involved with ThinkPad over the, you know, nearly 30 years at this point. Uh, and, you know, I can't, I can't talk about all of them and, and such, but there are definitely some standouts who uh, I think deserve mention. One is, is obviously Richard Zapper. Richard was a fantastic person and designer. Uh, had this uh, German sensibility and this Italian flair kind of rolled into one. And he was, um, he was very entertaining to work with. Uh, never a dull moment. Uh, had a fantastic wit and energy about him. And was perfectly willing to roll up his sleeves and try to help solve a problem or, or, uh, or stop the the uh, the onslaught of you know there were some crazy people trying to do things he he would jump right into the fray and, and say wait a minute we're not, this is crazy we're not doing this and and say why people would listen to him so he was uh, he was a charismatic um, very smart person with a fantastic design track record you know I don't know it's over a dozen of his objects in the Museum of Modern Art design collection and such, but you know, he, was a, he was a creative energy and, and fountain of, uh, of ideas and, and thinking. And I had the great pleasure of working him with, for him or with him for decades, which is almost unheard of. I mean, it's, uh, I told an engineer once, they said, well, it's kind of like, you know, he was an electrical engineer. I said, well, it's sort of like, imagine you knew Thomas Edison and worked with him for like 20 years. He's like, whoa, <laughs> that's as well. He's in the design world. He's huge. He's one of the he's one of the two or three top designers ever walked the face of the earth, in my opinion. Uh, so you know, he was a fantastic resource and, and, and session. Great pleasure to work with him. We were good friends. And he's been to his place on the lake, and he's been to my house. We traveled the world together. And, we had some fantastic experiences. It was very sad to, have to lose him. Uh, it was like losing a brother or a, or a great friend that you've known your whole life. But his work, I think, is very key to what the design ethos of ThinkPad is, this functional object that has a little flair to it that makes it more interesting. And an element of surprise. He was very big on surprise. You know, like you see this very formal black box and you open it and on the inside is a little red dot. Whoa, what's that? You know? And it's, you can see it in much of his work. Always thinking in a different way, you know, like his uh, tea kettle that, that is, plays a harmony when the water boils. That's, uh, that's 
it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's uh, most designers didn't think about the sound that a water kettle would make. They would just think that it would whistle. Well, his whistle was a was a tuned sound. <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. That's the kind of thing he did. But he was uh, he was a very instrumental part of the ThinkPad uh, team for decades. On the uh, engineering side, uh, you know, you can't talk about ThinkPad without talking about Microsoft. And I had a great working relationship, and so did Richard with Naito Son. Uh, it was a wonderful sense of mutual respect, and we kind of both knew where our where our playgrounds were. <laughs> and we knew that they kind of met in the middle somehow, but we respected all of that and uh, played off of each other. And one of the things I really like about Naito-san is that he enjoyed being challenged. If you had something that you wanted to do, he wouldn't just say, there's no way to do this <laughs> and, and walk out of the room or, or you know, mobilize the legions of doom with the power you know, to, to bury you with the 400 reasons why it wouldn't work. He would, he would, you know, take it as a challenge, a personal challenge, and he would go to his team and try to figure out if it could be done. Uh, and I was like, well, this is fantastic. And he was uh, just a wonderful leader uh, for his team, uh, emotional leader, a technical leader, just a great guy. And you know, I'm still in touch with him on, send him a note every once in a while or see him on Facebook. He's always doing something interesting. He's got a lot of hobbies that I didn't really know about for years. You know, he's into like vintage stereos and bought an electric guitar. Wow. I, didn't, I had no idea that he played the electric guitar, uh, but it doesn't necessarily surprise me because these things are kind of engineering oriented, the, the audio and the, guitar with amplification and such. There's an element of engineering there. But he's, uh, he's uh, like just a great guy. And he led that team in, uh, in Japan like nothing I've ever seen. Just uh, super, the perfect, the perfect kind of guy you want to lead something like that. So he had supreme technical knowledge and great leadership skills. So, you know, he was, uh, he was a great, you know, not really a, not a foil, if you will. He was a, he was a, not an adversary or foil. He was a, he was a colleague that, you know, like I said, we respected each other's domains and we needed each other. I remember the first time I ever made a presentation that he was in, he wanted a copy of it because he liked uh, certain slides that I had in this presentation. One of them was about purposeful design. And I had an, a, on the slide a picture of a tiger, a white background with a beautiful tiger standing there. And I said, tigers are a great example of purposeful design. They have stripes to hide in the grass so they can kill food. They don't have stripes because they're in this year. <laughs> he loved it. He's like, can I have a copy of this? So I, I gave him a copy. He actually asked me for another copy of it uh, shortly after I had left Lenovo because he said he couldn't find it. So I had to dig through my computer and find it. And uh, it, it was buried in there somewhere. But there were several slides that were like that. that uh, there was another one about the car where I had a picture of the dashboard of a car, a very well-designed dashboard. And I said, my team doesn't work on the engine. We work on the dashboard. There's a lot of people work on the engine. And we need them. But we're working on the user interface, which is how I drive the car. What does the car look like and how does it operate? And he liked that too, because it was like, I get it. You know, it's, uh, those are the domains and there's, there's intertwining and relationship, but there's a clear sort of separation between the, uh, the focus. So that was always fun. I could dig that presentation up somewhere, I'm sure. The whole thing. Mm. <laughs> you never know. It's probably buried in here somewhere. But he was he was definitely one one for the ages and still is. Um another one that 
comes to mind is is uh, Dr. John Caritas, wildly creative. Uh, he was just a fountain of creativity and energy. And it didn't stop with the uh, butterfly, although that's what everybody you know, associates with him. He was he was just uh, next level uh, engineering creative. You know, a lot of people think engineers are very sort of by the book and get a slide rule out and do, a, do some calculation and, you know, run uh, calculus or differential equations and junk like this. That guy was wildly creative in a way that uh, really augmented design because he, he brought ideas to the table continuously that were user experience focused, or if we had a design problem we were trying to solve, he said, well, let's work on it. I got you know, half hour for the plane leaves. <laughs> okay. You know, next thing I know, we're figuring some crazy thing out and getting the patent on it. And, and, and uh, you know, I think I've told you this before, you know, his favorite thing he would say was, ooh, ooh, <laughs> I got this idea. You know, like, Anytime you heard the ooh, ooh, you know, like, well, this is going to be a good one. And uh, that, he was just a, he was a fountain of, of information. I, I remember he showed me this concept once, I don't even remember what year it was, where he had this idea that uh, IBM should make a think watch. And his, his concept was it was a small display that you would wear on your wrist. And it could display information and connect you to the internet as well as tell time and make a phone call. And I'm like, could you really do that? He said, I, it's not that far away. Trust me. And we worked on some prototypes. This and IBM was just like, we're not making a watch. It was <laughs> into that. You know? Okay. He also had a phone that he worked on. Uh, he, I can't remember what he called it. Anyway, it was like a flip phone. You know, you held up like this and had a little thing you know, flipped out of it. You held it up like this and you saw what appeared to be like a 10 inch screen right in front of your face. And he had a prototype of that thing. It was like, well, show that to me again. I mean, you couldn't believe it. It was just a gaddling gun with these kinds of ideas. And uh, he didn't know, he didn't know the meaning of the word no. You know, it was like, well, I will come up with a way to do it. What's it going to be? I don't know yet. The next thing you know, you get a phone call from him. He's back in Somers or wherever. I've got, I've got some ideas. You got a minute? Yeah, okay. And he tell you five ways to do it. Okay. Wow. Um, another guy who I think is, who I can't, I can't leave off this list is Peter Hortensius. Peter was the, uh, when I first met Peter, he was working actually on uh, research. Kind of he was working for the chief technology officer for the PC group. He had come from uh, research. And so I met him there. And then he became the director of development for ThinkPad. And he was, uh, he was a challenging guy. And challenging actually in a good way. Because, you know, whatever he wanted to do, he would have, uh, he would, he would just make you run through the gauntlet of, well, what are you going to do about this? Or how's that going to work? Or is this going to be strong enough? Or like, it was like, he had all the right questions. It would, at the time, sometimes it would be very frustrating, but he brought out the best in people, I must say. He made me a better designer, a better thinker, and a, I think, even better at making presentations because I had to really work deeply on this stuff and be able to tell a story that would convince a guy like that because he was there was no stone that was left unturned nothing and he went on to be the general manager for thinkpad and then he was a senior vice president of the whole product group at lenovo and you know, he kept going up higher and higher in the organization but we always had great we had a great rapport with each other and such and i still see him on occasion we've done some stuff together actually built a piece of furniture with it, which was, was very entertaining, actually. Uh, but he's a, he's a great character. Uh, and, and like I say, I think he's a guy who knew how to bring out the best in people by challenging them. Kind of the, 
the uh, the Socratic method of, mm. of uh, you know, you challenge everything. In fact, I had a design professor when I was at the University of Kansas. He was the expert. We designed what I thought was the simplest thing in the world. We designed a, a, a hot plate. It was a school project, a student project. And by the time I was done designing this thing, I knew everything there was to know about cooking on a hot plate. And you would immediately think, oh, this is the easiest, stupidest project ever. You know, it's a burner and a little box and a knob. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's way more complicated than that. That was kind of the training ground for working with Peter. And so I, I was, uh, I was kind of liked it. It was uh, challenging. I can still remember in college, this hot plate, I designed it. Most people designed a two burner hot plate. I don't know why, but that's how it ended up. And I was in one of the first critiques and somebody presented theirs. And uh, this professor, his name was, was Professor Dykes. He smoked cigarettes and he'd take a big draw on his cigarette like this and say, how did you decide how far apart the burners were? And somebody would say, somebody well, um, I just drew it like that. Hmm. You might want to measure some pants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did anybody measure any pants? I mean, this is like, you know, first year design stuff. And, uh, you know, that was the tip of the iceberg. This, this fundamental idea, you know, well, frying pans actually have fairly set dimensions and a quart saucepan. And, you know, you can figure all this stuff out. Or you'd ask, you know, like, how are you going to clean this? Isn't grease going to go down in there? So you have to go fix it. It's a great, great education because, like I said, when you were done, you could defend everything. And it was similar with Peter because you, you had to really spin everything up to, um, to kind of think five steps ahead. He was a, another great one, I think. Do you know Peter? Have you met Peter? No, I. I've always like he's on my list of people one day I hope to talk to because <laughs> I I've read some great stories about him in uh, Steve Ham's book. Yeah, I, I, he must have interviewed him at some point or yes. a lot of people that worked around him. Yes, um, he did. I I remember reading a story. In fact, I think it's how the book even opens is a Peter Hortensius story about the envelope. About the envelope, yes. <laughs> when um, when the MacBook uh, Air yeah. was announced, and he uh, was frantically trying to find a inner office envelope uh, yeah. to see if the X three hundred would fit in it as well, and yeah. then further to that, of course, was the the advertisement um, that was put together where they they did show, of course, the. Um, the MacBook Air going in, but then they showed all the stuff that they had to plug yeah. into it. <laughs> they left out. So it so it could be properly compared. And of course the envelope gets ripped and everything. And yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So it's like the the man and the mind behind that, you know, would just be that as you've described, like just absolutely fantastic and would and would probably yeah. push you uh as you said. Oh yeah, he 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 would challenge everything, and like I said, I, it made me a better designer. It made the design of think better, better. It made every decision better. That's just that's how he rolled, and I have great respect for that. And it's part of the brand of ThinkPad mm -hmm. because, like I said, it's the thinking person's computer. You know, we did the thinking for you. We figured it all out. You don't have to. It's not our first uh, trip through this. We've done it before. We build on a foundation of knowledge. When you buy a, I, I don't know how many times I've said this to you, when you buy a ThinkPad, you're buying 30 years of the design of ThinkPad. That's what you're buying. You're not buying this week's. You're buying 30 years of accumulated knowledge of how to design one of these things. And that is priceless. 